Asus Sabertooth X99, 4.4 gigahertz. Now we spent several hours trying to push this to 4.5 gigahertz. We went as high as 1.4V on the CPU voltage. And we went as high as 1.3 on the system agent voltage. We upped the PCA voltage and a couple of other voltages. But just nothing that we could do on this board would would run 4.5 on this CPU and on the Asus X99 Deluxe we ran 4.5 no problem. The Sabertooth X99 doesn't have the same quality MOSFETs that the ROG boards and the X99 Deluxe board has. And we even went so far as to install four extra 120 millimeter high flow fans and the little saber tooth tough fan that's supposed to provide all this extra cooling on the MOSFET. And the highest stable speed that we could get on this CPU on the saber tooth is 4.4 gigahertz, which is 100 megahertz less than every other board we've tested. So, seeing that we've run four or five boards successfully at 4.5, we would have to say that uh, Sabertooth, with its second tier MOSFETs, just isn't capable of driving our CPU at 4.5 GHz. Now, that might just be our CPU, but we ran our CPU on four or five other boards successfully, same tests. Same real bench, same voltages, and the Sabertooth will let us go to 4.4, which is a great overclock. But it's just not a top-end overclock, which will end up costing it in the scoring phase. We took one additional step and went into the fan controller and maxed out every fan in the system. So we've got a 260 millimeter front fan. We've got four side fans that are 120 millimeter apiece. We've got the little MOSFET fan that comes with the Sabertooth X99. We've got a rear mounted 180. And we have the back of the chassis open to allow for adequate airflow. If we put any more air in that thing, we're going to have a tornado. If we had to guess, we would probably have to guess that it's the second tier most that's not holding up to the the voltage standards of the of the ones they use on the deluxe and on the ROG boards. But all in all, since the uh, Sabertooth is designed to be tough, and not as much of an overclocker as the other boards. 4.4 is a pretty fair overclock. It's just a little disappointing. We would have liked to have seen the same 4.5 that we've seen on other boards. A couple of other things that we've noticed on the Sabertooth X99 is you're a little bit stuck with the choice of using two GPUs or one GPU and an M2 solid state drive. On a board that runs in the $300 neighborhood, that's not really a choice you should have to make. There are plenty of other boards that ASUS have done that use a, a side-mounted M2 that stands up on a little bracket. And there's really no reason they couldn't have done that with the Sabertooth X99. But they chose to put it underneath a little plastic cap. And if you use the M2, it precludes using the secondary PCI slot for another video card. 
So we're seeing a few. Zero. Probes gone. <laughs> 200 is the max. Okay. Yeah? Even that? Or it might be the meter. Wrong higher, wrong higher. Have you got a different meter anyway? Have you got food? Oh, yeah. I think that's real. Is this nice? Yeah, yeah. Right now? Yeah, that's good head, folks. It's a good head hard to tell about the volume of speaking. What, what are you? 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 What are more, more, more. Oh my god, but you have to realize that you're up a lot of amenities that you're normally used to on an X99 board. The last time that I had to manually use a CMOS jumper block was about five years ago. No start button, no reset button. The, the only button that's on the board is the MIM OK button. So you're giving up a lot. It doesn't overclock as well as, say, the X99 Deluxe, which is in the same price range. So you got a choice to make. You can keep the dust off your board, or you can pay the same amount for a Deluxe board with better MOSFETs and better overclocking. 